Hello and good morning everyone. I am Pastor Jamel and on the behalf of Unconditional Love Church, I would like to welcome you to Resurrection Sunday, also called Easter Sunday, here at Unconditional Love. It's kind of different today because normally uh, on this day of the year we all look forward to dressing up in our uh, uh, Easter Sunday best and gathering in the building for worship. This time due to the COVID-19 crisis, we're unable to meet in the church building, but guess what? Just like Jesus is still alive, Jesus the Christ, the Spirit of Christ is still alive. Glory to God, church is still alive. The church is still alive because we are the church. So although COVID-19, uh, the crisis or the pandemic is preventing us from all gathering together, guess what? The church lives on and we are unstoppable because the great, awesome resurrection power of Jesus Christ is living inside of us. And here we are, right here, ready to worship and give God our best. I am so excited to have you with us. And it is our hope and prayer that you will enjoy this virtual gathering and that uh, God, His Spirit, will minister to you and give you everything you need to take. I'm excited about this worship celebration. God's going to do some awesome and some amazing things. All right, so here we are. If you're visiting with us for the first time, there is a link down at the very bottom of your screen if you're watching us live on Sunday. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you will not have this option. But if you're watching us live on Sunday, there's an option down at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the word Connect Card. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please click on that Connect Card and uh, fill that out. Let us know who you are and uh, where you're at so that we can keep in touch with you. Look, it's a no hassle guarantee. That means we're not gonna come by your house. We're not gonna knock on your door, do a drive by and throw a little Bi Gideon Bibles at your door, okay? Uh, <laughs> all right, we just wanna keep in touch with you and not with any harassing emails or text messages. We just want to be able to uh, just reach out to you and thank you for taking the time to worship with us. That's all we'll do. It's no, no hassle guarantee. So we thank you so much. Uh, to all of our members out there of Unconditional Love, I love you guys so much. And I miss you and I cannot wait until we are able to gather at 1519 Bardo Place in the city of Greensboro, North Carolina. And we're going to worship together once again. But until then, we'll continue to gather online. Let's get ready for an exciting Easter or resurrection celebration. Some awesome things are getting ready to happen. So let's get in the posture of worship and get ready to receive my brother and uh, one of our elders that is overseer, uh, uh, Jermaine Mondale. And he is getting ready to come to us with a word of encouragement with a, through a song. Uh, and this song is so appropriate with the time that we're living in, in the midst of this pandemic. So I'm going to ask you to sit back. No, don't sit back. I'm going to ask you to stand up, sit up, get ready to worship God as Elder Mondale, Overseer Mondale, sings this song. God bless you. I love you. Let's worship. Though the storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell my night from day still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, 
And if the wind keeps on blowing in my my soul has been cut in in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, though the storm keeps on raging in my very life. And sometimes it's hard to tell my night from my day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead. Be safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm they don't see, and if the wind keeps on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Yeah. I realize that sometimes in this life you're gonna be told by the waves and the current that seems so fierce but in the word of God I got an anchor that keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the time. But if the storm don't see, but it keeps the wind, keeps on blowing in my life, my soul. Heaven, I in the Lord. Hey. Oh, God. Come on, let's just thank our mighty God whose hands we're in and who anchors our soul and keeps us. Come on, let's just thank, let's take this opportunity on this Resurrection Sunday just to give him praise. Thank you, God, for keeping our souls. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our soul is anchored in the Lord. That means, guys, we're going to be all right. That's right. We're going to be okay. Glory to God. The economy is going to be okay. Our money is going to be okay. Those of y'all that are out out of work, you know, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay because our souls are anchored in the Lord. Come on, let's just thank Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Great and powerful God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you for the life that Jesus lived. We thank you, Father, for sending the Spirit of Christ in a body that would be labeled Jesus. And that body would walk this earth, walk this world, and give us a new and living way, a new way, a new truth, a new life. Glory to God. That would be different from the old covenant and from the law and from legalism. And uh, even though that new life and that new message would eventually cause religious uh, leaders and interpreters of the law to kill him, he was willing to fight and to, to, 
stand up for the message that he wanted us to know and those principles which give us life. And we thank you for that. We praise you, Father, for the resurrection power that you exhibited by even raising his mortal body up from the dead and then giving us that same power. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for uh, keeping our families and thank you, God, for keeping us safe and keeping us protected in the midst of crisis. And God, we know that there's some out there that are afraid and uh, uh, and that are they're anxious and uh, the little word, God, cause them to experience the peace within, glory to God, that passes all understanding and give them your peace. Lord, we ask that you would be with our, our church and be with our families, be with our friends. Father, keep them safe, keep them well, keep their immune system strong, God, to fight off every virus and every infection in the name of Jesus Christ. God, be with us today in this service. Let every need be met. I thank you for everyone that visited today. God, let something happen inside of them and inside of us today that will change our lives forever. Father, just continue to keep us. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and count it as done. Amen. God bless you guys. We want to just give you a few quick announcements. First of all, Bible study is on every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. That's going to take place on uh, my personal Facebook page, which is Bishop B. Jamel Broadnax. It also will be shared on our church Facebook page, Unconditional Love Church. Um, so tune in every Wednesday, Facebook Live, 7.30 p.m. This service today will be available for replay um, on the same platform at ulctv.org. It will also be available on our YouTube channel, uh, Unconditional Love Church. Also, we want to remember, uh, especially for our members, and this is really directed toward our members and not our guests, uh, but for our members, let's not forget to give. You'll see at the top of the screen, right above the chat box, you'll see a give button. Be sure to click on that button, give your tithes and your offerings so that we can continue to operate as a church, to pay bills, to uh, to pay uh, the rent on our building, utilities, and things such as that. Uh, in addition to the option to click on the Give button, you can also go to unconditionallovechurch.com and you can click at the bottom of the screen on the Donate Now button or you can also text the word GIVE. G-I-V-E to 336-265-2551 and you can give there. Now, for our first time guests or any of our guests that are not members, there's no pressure for you to give, but for those of us that call Unconditional Love home, uh, we want to make sure that we're giving to take care of God's house. But again, there's no pressure for any of our uh, guests to give. If you feel persuaded to give, we, of course we uh, we welcome you to do so, but no pressure from you. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for uh, for any of our announcements or observations. I am ready to hear some more good singing and getting ready for the Word of God. Overseer um, Jermaine is getting ready to come again with a song reminding us of Jesus Christ, the life he lived, his death, and his resurrection, and then we're getting ready for the Word of God. God bless you. Come on, let's worship again. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they laid Jesus?
was in the tomb. Were you there? Were you there when they laid Jesus in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when he rose with all power in his hand? Were you there? Were you there when he rose all power in his hand? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there? All of us just went there in our minds and in our, in our souls. We all just went there went to the cross. We went to that place. And listen, guys, this was, you know, this was no fun moment. This is no moment necessarily to jump up and down and run around the church about. This is a moment to cry about. It's a moment to, to really show sorrow, you know, because Jesus, this, this was an innocent man, guys. This was a man that was only bringing a new message, a message of life. He was trying to take the people away from that old message, guys. The old message of, of law and, and um, you, you know, of, of death and law. And he was bringing a new message of life. And those religious leaders and, and teachers and interpreters of, of the law, the church, they didn't like it. They did not like it and they sought every opportunity they could to kill him, to murder him. Guys, a lot of people say God killed his son. No, God did not kill his son. Religious people killed Jesus. Okay? He was assassinated. Unfair. God didn't send him here to die. Did God know he was going to die? Certainly. But God didn't send him here to die. God sent him here to live. Glory to God. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, they sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Didn't say he sent him here to die. No, he sent him here to live. But he was killed and he was assassinated. But he did that for us. And by doing that for us, I want to give you a new meaning of that. When we say he did that for us, what that really means, guys, it means that he was not willing to take down. Glory be to God. He was not willing to back up. He was not willing to shut his mouth. He was not willing to, to just because this is what the church has always taught. They have always taught these, these laws and these rules just because they always taught that. He was not willing to shut up and go along with what they always taught. No, he brought a new message. He brought a message of life. He brought a message that said, guys, you, you, you can have a, as John 10 and 10 says, you can have a full and abundant and satisfying life. Glory be to God. And he did this for us. So in that sense, he died for us so that we would be able to have this message, these principles. He was willing to put his life on the line knowing that his words would cause him to eventually get killed. You know, I, I like to give a good analogy to help people really piece this thing together. A very modern event, which only happened, what, about um, 60 years ago or something like that? Uh, and that is the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. The, the death of Dr. Martin, he did the same, he did the same thing in that, a similar thing in a very similar way. 
Dr. Martin Luther King was unwilling to shut up, knowing that it went against what had always been taught here in America. And Dr. Martin Luther King was not willing to take down on his message, but he stood on it knowing that it would even cost him his life. So Martin Luther King died for us. That's how Jesus did. He died for us because he wanted us to see freedom. He wanted us to hear this new message, glory to God, this new and living way. Oh, and I'm so glad that he, glory to God, was willing to put his life on the line so that we can learn these principles, guys. Glory be to God. These life-changing principles. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory for Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that, you know, even with that, you know, even with the death of Jesus, man, God raised him from the dead. God showed his power. He showed his approval on the message of Jesus Christ by not even letting his mortal body stay in a tomb. Isn't that something? Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you for your word. Speak to me. Speak through me. God, use me for thy glory. I yield myself to you, Father. Hallelujah. Use me in the name of Jesus Christ. I give myself completely to you. Amen. Mark 16 and 6. I got three scriptures we're going to read. Uh, on If you're on our uh, mobile platform, excuse me, it's not necessarily a mobile platform uh, on your computer or, or whatever. If, if you're at uh, ulctv.org, if you're watching us there and not on YouTube, so if you're at ulctv.org, you can actually click on the little book that you see there um, to your left, I believe, and uh, left of the chat box. And that, that is a Bible, and you can follow along with me. Today we're going to be going to Mark 16 and 6, Ephesians 3 and 20, Romans 8 and 10. If I can borrow about 15 minutes of your time. Uh, Mark 16 and 6 says, <clears throat> Don't be alarmed, he said. This was the angel. Uh, this is where um, Mary and Mary Magdalene had come to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus uh, to, to keep his body from stinking. And when they got there, Jesus was not there. So Mark 16 and 6 says, the, the, the angel said to them, do not be alarmed, he said. <clears throat> you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Now let's go to Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who is able to do in immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Glory to God. I'm getting happy too early. Romans 8 and 10 through 11. And Christ, hallelujah, lives within you. Glory to God. And Christ lives within you. Let me read it again. And Christ lives within you. Glory to God. So even though your body dies because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right <laughs> with God, the Spirit of God, watch this, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. I like the King James Version. It says, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Glory to God. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your bodies, mortal bodies, by his, the same spirit, this same spirit 
living within you. Whoa, did you hear that? The angel said, don't be alarmed. He is not here. He has risen. Paul said in Romans 8, the same power, glory be to God, that raised Jesus Christ, the same power that raised him from the dead lives in you. Glory be to God. Ephesians 3 and 20 says that there is a power working inside of you that can do immeasurably more than all you can ask or think. Glory be to God. And I want to talk just for about 10 more minutes, guys. I want to talk just for about, yeah, it's, gonna, it's not going to be a long one here. Glory to God. I want to talk for just about 10 more minutes from the subject on this Easter Sunday, guys. I want to talk from this subject. There's power trapped inside of you waiting to get out. Did you hear what I said? There is power trapped inside of you that's waiting to get out. Glory be to God. On this Resurrection Sunday, guys, on this Easter Sunday, it's not just about Jesus getting out of the tomb. It's not just about Jesus being resurrected. As a matter of fact, as we celebrate this day, uh, this uh, the resurrection of Christ, on this Resurrection Sunday, it's not just about Jesus outside of you, but it's about Jesus inside of you. Glory be to God. Do you hear me? This Resurrection Sunday is going to be different than every other Resurrection Sunday that you've ever celebrated, that we've ever acknowledged. Glory to God. Because on this Resurrection Sunday, it's not just about the Christ outside of you that got out of the grave and we're dancing and we're shouting and we're praising. No, this Resurrection Sunday, it's not just about the Christ outside of you, but it's about the Christ inside of you. For even Romans chapter 8, verse number 10, the first three words says, well, really the first five words says, and Christ lives within you. <laughs> Glory to God. Christ lives within you. Glory to God. And it, it, and it also says that the same power, glory be to God, that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of you. So this Resurrection Sunday, we're not just talking about Christ outside of you. We're talking about Christ inside of you. Okay, guys, yeah, you've read about this resurrection story. You've celebrated the stories. We preach fancy sermons uh, about uh, who roll, who's going to roll away the stone and, uh, and all of these things. And, and we, we, we talk about, um, especially in some of our more charismatic and poetic sermons and, and poetic styles of preaching, uh, we, we, we put him in the grave and we go through that story about how he carried his own cross and walked up Golgotha's hill and, and about how um, he died. Glory to God. And he, he, they stretched him. They, what, what, they, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. And, and we talk about how they put him in the tomb and, and we preach him out of that tomb. We, we say he was in there one day and he was in there two days and he was in there three days. And then we go into our little fancy preaching and we say, and early... You know what I'm talking about, especially in the Baptist church. You know what I'm saying? And early one Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave. But guys, but guys, this Resurrection Sunday, okay, you've read the stories and you've celebrated the stories about him rising up out of the tomb. Glory to God. But this Resurrection Sunday, we're not just going to talk about him rising up out of the tomb because you've read about that and you've celebrated the fact that he rose up out of the tomb. But have you realized that he has risen in you? Glory be to God. 
God? Is anybody hearing me today? You've celebrated and you've read the stories and you've, you've celebrated the fact and you've danced about the fact that he rose out of the grave and, and that he, uh, and, and all of the, 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 the different um, celebrations of him rising from the tomb. But you have, have you realized, have you realized that he has risen inside of you? Oh, dear friends, that's what we want to talk about today. I want you to understand, glory to God, that he has risen inside of you. Yes, you're, you're, you're dancing and you're shouting about his power. Hear me close. We're dancing and we're shouting about his power, but you don't even recognize your own power. I wish I had a church right about now. I said you're shouting and you're dancing about his power, but you don't even recognize your own power. You don't realize that his power is your power. Glory be to God. Guys, I'm getting happy here. I said his power is your power. Glory be to God. For the scripture we read today in Romans 8 and verse 10 through 11, it says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Glory be to God. Did you hear me? So you're dancing and shouting and about his power, but you don't even recognize your own power. You don't understand that his power is your power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Watch this. It says it lives in you. Oh, I'm feeling God right about now. Glory to God. Did you hear what I said? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That's right. Lives in you. Not lying dormant. Glory to God. It's not dead. It's not laying dormant in you. No, it's alive. Glory to God. It lives in you. Hallelujah. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it lives in you. It lives. It's not dormant. It's active. It is alive. It is active and it's at work. And God sent me and he sent you to hear me today. He calls you to click on that link so that you can hear me to, to help you to understand that that power, resurrection power, it's alive in you. It's at work in you. It is active in you. It is glory be to God. I feel him right now. Whoo, hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. It's working, huh? It's working inside of you. It is active. It is moving. And it's ready to work. Glory to God. It's ready to heal. It's ready, glory to God, to deliver. It's ready. It's active, not dormant, not dormant, but it lives in you. It is at work. Do you, glory to God, do you know who you are? Oh, I know you know who he is. You dance and you shout about it all the time. But glory to God, it's time, hallelujah, to have your own resurrection experience. Glory to God, where the Christ, ha, hey, thank you, God, where the Christ inside of you comes alive. Glory to God, where the Christ inside of you resurrects. Glory to God, and you, glory to God, you come into an acknowledgement. You come into an awareness. That's why we talk about our church. We say we are a Christ conscious church. That's what Christ consciousness is. It's Christ awareness. It's realizing what already is. You just don't know it, but it's coming into an awareness that the real Christ is. He is already in you. You don't have to wait on him to return. People are sitting around waiting on a second coming and you don't realize he already came. He is inside of you. He's there, the spirit of Christ. And that spirit is power. And it's the same power, glory to God, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And it is 
active. It lives. Glory to God inside of you. And I want to tell you, it's not a different power. Hey, hallelujah. Did you hear me? I said it's not a different power. But the Bible says in Romans 8, 10, and 10 to 11, it says the same. Whoo, I feel them, y'all. I feel them, y'all. I feel that power right now. It says the same whoo, power that raised Jesus from the dead lives, is active, and at work inside of you. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are in him? Do you know who he is in you? Do you know that you are one and you are inseparable? Glory to God. The Bible says that we have been raised. Hey, thank you, Lord. The scripture says we have been raised together with Christ. Oh, yes. We, we died with him and we've been raised with him. Glory be to God. The power of God is at work inside of you. You've just got to come into Christ consciousness. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. You've got to come into Christ awareness. It's there. But you've been tricked. You've been bamboozled by doctrines of devils. Glory to God. Glory to God to make you think that this, <coughs> that this devil is out there and he's in competition with you and he's got just as much power as you got. That's a lie, guys. You have inside of you the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Glory to God. <coughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You've got to come into that Christ consciousness, that awareness of what's working in you. It lives. Again, it's not dormant. It lives in you. But you just got to come into an awareness. You got to realize it's there. It's time for you to have a resurrection experience within you. Did you hear what I said? Hey. Thank you, Lord. Did you hear what I said? It's time for you to have a resurrection experience within you. It's time for Jesus to get up. Thank you. It's time for Jesus to get up inside of you because he's been there. Power has been there. It's been there and it's been active and it's been working. Just like glory to God, This, uh, if I was to turn off Glory to God, this light switch. Glory to God, the lights are off. Glory to God, but there's still power that's in a canister outside. Glory to God, there's a canister outside with power bouncing around in it and it's trapped in there. Remember the name of this sermon is there's, there's power trapped inside of you waiting to get out. You've got to understand that power is alive. It is at work, but you, you have not come into Christ's consciousness. You don't know that it's working inside of you. You don't know that you've got that power in you because you have not come into that awareness. So the power is trapped inside of you, just like the power outside in that canister waiting on you to have a resurrection experience and hit the switch. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the light comes on and the power begins to, to come out of the canister. Glory to God and go to work all around you. Hallelujah. There's a power in you that's trapped inside of you that's waiting to be acknowledged and realized so that it can come out of you and work all around you. And that power is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, not a different power. That power is Christ. It is the Christ in you. Hallelujah. And it's not a different Christ. It's not a different God. It's the same. Ah, hey, it's the same God who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Glory to God. Mm. He's in you. He's in you. And you've got to have a resurrection experience within you. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Listen, I want to say this and I got to go. But we talk about the death of Jesus. Listen, religion and religious people 
<coughs> killed Jesus. You hear me? Religion, and I, I'm getting to a point. Watch what I'm going to say. Religion and religious people killed Jesus. And here's what I'm getting to. Religion and religious people also killed the Jesus in you. Did you, did you, did you catch that? I, I, you knew I was going somewhere with that. Jesus was killed. Christ was, not Christ wasn't killed because you can't kill Christ. Christ is a spirit. But Jesus was killed because they didn't like his message. He was killed by the religious leaders and the interpreters of the law. He was killed by religion because he was saying something different. He was saying, your hope is not in the law. Your hope is in what, I, what I'm saying. My new message. And they didn't like that. A new way that had nothing to do with rules. It had something to do with life. <laughs> Living and enjoying life. Hallelujah. But they didn't like that. So religion and religious people killed Jesus. Well, guess what? It's still happening right now. Religion and religious people have killed the Christ in you. Dead. Not moving. Figuratively speaking. Because I said you can't kill Christ. But figuratively speaking, just like religion and religious people killed Jesus Right here today in modern times, religion, figuratively speaking, religion and religious people have killed the Christ in you. With their rules, with their teachings, with their legalism, with their bondage. But it's time for you to let what religion and religious people and religious teaching killed, it's time for you to allow and let what religion and religious teaching killed, let it be resurrected today. Christ. It's time for the Christ in you. I'm closing. This is my closing. It's time for the Christ in you and the power in you to be resurrected, to come to life. It's time for there to be a consciousness, a Christ consciousness and awareness that me and Christ, God, are one and the same. There is no difference, there is no separation. Oh, that's a resurrection experience. There's power trapped inside of you and is waiting to get out. And that power is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And it lives in you. It's active. It's alive. Let's pray. Father, woo! We thank you for this resurrection experience today. Hallelujah. I believe that the Christ inside of somebody is coming alive right now. Hey, thank you, Lord. And I prophesy into their lives and I I speak to the Christ in them. Live! 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 Pray that your eyes will be open and that you would receive light. That your eye would be able to receive light and your whole body will become light or enlightened. Father, we thank you for this resurrection experience today. 
thank you. Not just for the Jesus outside of us, not just the story. Today, God, we're not just celebrating the story. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for sending him. And we thank you for him standing up for what he believed, for giving us this message that he was willing to die for. And we thank you for demonstrating his power and your power by raising him up from the dead. But God, we thank you even more for putting him inside of us. Putting that spirit, the spirit of Christ. As Paul said, and Christ lives in you. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for this power that will no longer remain trapped inside of us. We're going to release it. We're going to loose it. Because <laughs> we acknowledge it. We're going to let it work. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing. Amen. Woo, my friends, hallelujah to God. Give him praise all in your homes, your bedrooms, your living rooms, your kitchens, wherever you are. If you happen to be in the car, wherever, give him praise for the power that's at work inside of you. That resurrection power, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Glory to God. It's been trapped inside of you, waiting to get out. Today, you experience a resurrection experience. Glory to God. And you are being enlightened, and you're coming into a Christ consciousness, a Christ awareness. Glory to God. We're not just celebrating His power, but now you're not just recognizing His power, you're recognizing your own power because His power is your power. For the same power, the glory to God that raised Jesus from the dead works and lives and is active inside of you. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. I don't want to close without giving someone an opportunity. I really don't even have to do this today because we really did it in the message and in that last prayer. Because when we talk about quote unquote getting saved. I really don't even like that term anymore. But when we talk about that, what we're talking about is reconnecting to the God that has always been in you. He's never left. He, I mean, he can't leave because he's the reason you're alive. God is in every human being, every man, everyone. God is there. And what happens is we are blinded and most of the time by social conditioning and we don't realize that God is in us. So when I talk about salvation or whatever you want to call it, I'm talking about reconnecting to the God that's always been in you. Coming into an, coming into an awareness of that. So today, if you have not, I want you to come into that place and I want you to, uh, to, to reconnect with God. And in the sense, as we normally say, give him your life. Don't just live but watch this. Here's my, my, my new saying. Don't just live for him, but live with him. All right, guys. I love you. Happy Easter. Enjoy your Easter day. Enjoy your family. I know you guys got some great food that you're probably going to eat today. You know, uh, I think a lot of people do that Easter ham. Uh, maybe you don't eat pork, but whatever the case, you enjoy your day. I love you guys so, so much. God's grace, God's peace be with you all and have an awesome and wonderful week. I love you and I'm praying for you and your families. Bye-bye now. Have a great week.